Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 8. This is going to be the continuation of the commentary on the series, the book of Jeremiah. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah 8 and verse 1. At that time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. And they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven whom they have loved and whom they have served. Yes, they serve the God of the sun, the God of the moon, and all the host of heaven. What's the host of heaven? The angels. You know, there was a, I believed in the Bible when I was real young, and then I saw those phonies on television, you know, television is vile filth for six and a half days a week, and then on Sunday morning, oh, well, we got Bible preachers on, you know, Billy Goat Graham and what have you. You know, the Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, how is it television can have, you know, stuff about witches and vampires and killings and sex and whatever, and then all of a sudden on Sunday morning, they're going to let a true preacher, a true man of God on? I don't think so. And besides, all they were ever interested in is, uh, you know, send God your tithe. Here's our address. You know, uh, pfft. Yeah, that's, that's what they were all about. I mean, I was, what, probably a young teen, middle school age, I think uh, eighth grade. Yeah, eighth grade. And uh, I knew it was fake, walked away. But uh, years later, got interested into the, uh, the New Age movement. And, you know, they... Uh, I bought a book and it says, oh yeah, you know, uh, buy crystals. Now, the thing is about crystals, they use crystals to, for radios. They use crystals for lasers, ruby lasers. They use crystals for uh, transistors. There's a lot of uh, applications for crystals. But it's giving glory to the creation and not the creator. Well, I read in this book, it was like, oh yeah, you take crystal and you leave it out uh, under the full moon. And I'm like reading this going, what? Eh, this doesn't sound right. You know, it was basically witchcraft so all the christian training i had from in middle school when i went to a baptist private school all that training started kicking in i was like wait a minute something's up with this so uh yeah also it really helped too was uh when i went to the uh new age bookstore they had a special room in the back all the way in the back where they had hardcore satanism stuff that really did it yeah i mean hardcore satanism stuff i mean the real deal and um uh, guess what when i opened up a hardcore satanism book looked uh as investigation not so much not following it but investigating Guess what the highest symbol in the satanic occult was? 
The six-pointed star. Yeah. The six-pointed star. Uh, where do you see that? Oh, yeah, there's a certain country in the Middle East that has that symbol on their flag. See, they tell you who they serve but via their flag and their their words and their symbols and their little rituals and you know they let you know so these people they took the bones right verse 2 and they spread them before the sun and the moon and all the hosts of heaven whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked and whom they have sought and whom they have worshipped they worship the sun, the moon, the fallen angels. They shall not be gathered nor be buried. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. And if you don't know what dung is, uh, watch a cow eating at one end and then look at what comes out the other end and you'll, you'll know what a dung is. Yeah. Verse 3. And death, spiritual death, and death, death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places whither I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall? and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright, no man repented him of his wickedness. You know, there's people who will tell you repent does has nothing to do with uh, turning away from wickedness. I, you know, uh, right here. No man repented him of his wickedness. I mean, duh. You know, these false preachers... The only reason they get away with this stuff is because people won't read the Bible. People read the Bible, false preachers would be out of business. But they know you're too lazy. Well, maybe not you guys and gals, but most most of them. Just, you know, 98% or whatever of churchgoers. I have met very very few people that claim that they've read the entire Bible. Very few. You know, I came to the Lord. That was the first thing I did. I, I was like, Psh. everybody's like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Start in Matthew. Start in Matthew. Start in Matthew. No. No. Genesis, people. Genesis is the first book in the Bible. It means beginning. You know, Genesis. Gene. Like DNA, generate, you know, create. Uh, you know, what does a generator do? It creates energy, right? Ugh. The Bible doesn't start in Matthew. Sorry. It starts in Genesis. Verse 6. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course, as a horse rusheth into, into the battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do you say we are wise 
and the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. Now, the scribes were the copyists of the law. They didn't have books and printing presses back then. The Bible was hand copied meticulously. But uh, these people, they didn't. They didn't want to listen to what the Lord had to write, you know. So the pen of the scribes was in vain. It was worthless to them. Anyways, verse 9. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? Therefore, Will I give their wives unto others? Uh, how's he going to do that? Well, the wise men, when they're dead, when the husbands are dead, the wives are going to get uh, remarried or something, all right? Therefore, I will give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness, that means they're greedy. From the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Boy, that's, that's sad. The prophets and the priests, even the people that are supposed to be serving God, they deal falsely and they're greedy. Verse 11. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? You know, a sin that God really hates? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation. They shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree. Little note here. Grapes were a figure of Israel and figs was a symbol of Judah after all when Adam and Eve fell and they made aprons what did they make them out of fig leaves I covered that in a previous study so I, I really don't want to get into it but you know just so you know so there's no fruit on the vine of Israel, and there's no fruit on the fig tree. Well, in Matthew 21, let's see, verse 18. Now in the morning, as he, Jesus, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, now remember the fig tree was a symbol of Judah. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. And he said unto it, Let no fruit grow on, grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away and when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? The fig tree was the symbol of Judah. Judaism. Guess what? There is no fruit in Judaism. It said, Let no 
fruit grow on thee henceforth, uh, henceforward forever. So when people start talking about Hebrew roots, they're talking about a fruitless tree. Yeah. That Jesus cursed. Did you know that? Jesus cursed the fig tree. Uh, Hosea 9.10 now listen to this. I found Israel, I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. Okay, so Israel's likened to grapes. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time, but they went after Baal Peor, the false god, and separated themselves unto that shame, and their abominations were according as they loved. Now, in Mark eleven twenty one, this is a parallel account. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. Yes, Jesus cursed the fig tree. Judaism is cursed. Back to Jeremiah 8, 13. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree. And the leaf shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves, and let us enter into the defensive cities, and let us be silent there, for the Lord our God hath put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. You don't hear this preached very often, do you? And let us be silent there, for the Lord our God hath put us to silence and given us water of gall to to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. Water of gall. Hmm, where have I read that before? There is some symbolism here. Matthew chapter 27. Jesus is being led away to be crucified. Verse 32. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him, Jesus, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. Oh boy, I bet you that was a nasty thing. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Well, and they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Hmm. Back to Jeremiah 8.14. For the Lord our God hath put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came. And for a time of health, and behold, trouble. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of of the neighing of his strong ones. For they are come and have devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices, which is a type of really deadly viper, 
Uh, for behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices among you, which will not be charmed. Uh, have you ever heard, like in India, they take a cobra and they put it in a basket. And the guy sits there and plays the flute and he, you know, weaves back and forth. And then it looks like the cobra is dancing, but it's not. It's, it's getting, it wants to strike, but the guy keeps moving, so the snake moves with it. You know, and they call that snake charming, but <laughs> really you're not charming the snake. And the snake is not charming. You know, you might have Prince Charming, but uh, the Cobra is not charmed. All right, so, for behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices among, amongst, among you, which shall not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith the Lord. When I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Behold, the voice of of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country is not the Lord in Zion is not her king in her why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities boy listen to this the harvest is past the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Boy, that is depressing. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. You know, we're talking about an agricultural type thing here. You know, uh... You plant in the spring, summer grows, in the fall you harvest, right? The harvest has passed, the summer has ended, and we are not saved. But there's a spiritual application of this. You know, spring is like the evangelist comes. And he plants the seed. And the Holy Spirit waters. And then hopefully you got a pastor or a teacher to help you grow. And then there's a harvest. What? A harvest? How's there a harvest, Chaplain Bob? How about Matthew 9, verse 35? And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Oh yeah. How about Matthew 13 verse 24? Parable of the Wheat and the Tares. I did an entire Bible study on this. Boy, they explain this one away. They spiritualize the whole thing. Matthew 13, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, 
Didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. You know, if you pull up the weeds after they get big, well, you know, the roots are intertwined with the, the, the crops, and you pull up the bad stuff, but you're pulling up the stuff you're trying to cultivate. So, you know, got to wait until the harvest. Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. You know, this verse right here kills the pre-trib rapture. This one verse right here destroys the pre-trib rapture. Jesus said, Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Well, you know, uh, just like when Jesus said that uh, his coming would be like the time of Noah, what happened in Noah's flood? Who was taken? Who was left behind? The wicked were taken, and at the end of the flood, Noah was left behind. But your uh, Baptist churches, well, they, they make it the opposite of what it means. So, let's skip down to verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Hey, dude, can you explain this to us? We're confused. Oh, no, that's the Bob translation. Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The harvest is the end of the world. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Oh yeah. Hey, what about that harvest? Revelation 14, verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to them that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he sat on the cloud, and he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. 
Jeremiah 8, verse 20. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Verse 21. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? I am black. Hey, that proves that Jesus was an African, right? Uh, well, I don't know. What does black represent? Well, let's take a look at the word white in Revelation. Revelation 3, 4. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, clothing, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. You know what? I read this. It looks like people's names can be blotted out of the book of life. Well, where did people come up with this once saved, always saved eternal security thing? I mean, if God can blot your name out of the book of life, I mean, you got to probably do some really nasty, something nasty to get your name blotted out of the book of life. I mean, really, you think about it. What do you got to do? Uh, you know, commit the unpardonable sin, you know, attribute the works of Christ to the devil, or take the mark of the beast. Uh, you know, that's two things that come to mind. There might be more, but, you know, I don't know. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, clothing, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Revelation 3.18 I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, salve, that thou mayest see. Revelation 4.4 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Who are these 24 elders? Well, I think it's the um, 12 sons of Jacob Israel and the 12 apostles. Well, minus Judas plus Paul. That's my guess. Uh, do I have it all figured out? No. But that's, that's what I would guess. That would be my educated guess. Doesn't mean I'm right, but that would be my guess. So, yeah. Revelation 6.11 And white robes, white robes, that sounds racist, don't it? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet oh, for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Revelation 7, 9. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. 
Hmm. Let's skip down to 713. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said, un, uh, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Okay. Revelation 15, 6, And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. Revelation 19, 8, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And how do you get righteousness of saints? Uh, faith in Christ and what he did. His righteousness. His righteousness. Matthew 6.33 But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Romans 3.25 Whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Romans 3, 26, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. And Revelation 19, 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, clean, uh, white and clean. Huh. So if white is righteousness, uh, what does the color black represent? I don't know. I'm just asking. Asking for a friend. All right. Well, um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.